talked in a microphone in a long time. So, my name is Brian. I, um, this is me. I, I graduated from CU about two years ago. I graduated with a degree in speech language and hearing science, so yes. Um, obviously, being deaf is why I kind of looked into the field because I grew up around that. Um, so let's see. Grow, growing up, I, I grew up here in Brookfield in elementary, middle, and high school. My school had a deaf program, so I've always known some other other deaf peers. Um, my for communication, primarily, I just use speaking just because everyone around me in my life speak. Um, however, I have, a lot, I have a lot of deaf peers, so with them, it's always full ASL, which includes my roommate. She's, she's also fully deaf, so when we're both home, it's implants off in full sign. Um, let's see. So right, right after I graduated high school, I started at University of Northern Colorado in the, about the same field, speech, language, and hearing. Um, it was a, I say, going through college was a struggle being deaf because no, no one else really understands what you're going through. Like when you're, when you're meeting professors for the first time, going through classes, it's, it's a lot different than it was in high school because you're in the classroom, you're the only deaf person there. So that, that being said, like I've had to learn a lot of self-advocacy. So using the Disabilities Resource Center on campus, they, I, I did a lot of different um, accommodations just to see what fit me best. I've had ASL interpreting, I tried note-taking, and I had live captioning, like with the, the card, but it would be right on my laptop. Um, they all, they all worked for me, and like some ways worked really well, some didn't. Um, I think earlier in Greg's presentation, talking about we have an ASL interpreter in math class. I I did experience that, and that was it, it's difficult because a, a lot of things in math are brand new, so. I don't know the sign for certain math formulas because you, you didn't learn that growing up. Um, and then having a note taker, that works really well if you had a good note taker. A lot of universities, what they do is your note taker is one of your peers. So if, if one of the peers is great at taking notes, they come to class, it's really beneficial. But you take your own notes to kind of compare, it works really well. However, you might have a note taker who comes to class once a week, doesn't communicate anything, and then you go like three weeks and you're like, oh, I haven't had a note in a while. But that's that's kind of on me. I should have I should have said something to the professor or to the disability center saying like, hey, I haven't had a note in three or four weeks. But anyway. Accommodations. I think my favorite ended up being having card, like a live captioning on my laptop. So when I'm that way, like I can take notes, look on the computer right in front of me, and see if I miss anything. And then, of course, after class, you have a live transcript, and it just it helped me best personally. But everyone is different. For instance, my roommate, she prefers ASL interpreting for everything. Um, I guess through, through our college, socially, I've, I've learned to be very open about being deaf because if you're not open about being deaf, it's, people don't, people don't know, like, they just think you're, they might think you're ignoring them, I, there's a lot of different things, but when you communicate that you are deaf, um, it, it helps everyone around you. And what I've learned is, like if, if someone looks down at you because you're deaf, they're likely not a good friend. But um, people learn, and you just kind of teach them about 
about being deaf, like what you can hear, what you can't hear, what what your friends should do to help you out. And then that, that helped me a lot. So like during my junior year of college, I studied abroad in Australia. And um, so right when I got there, the first thing I noticed was I couldn't understand anyone dealing with their accent. I, you know what they're saying, you couldn't read the lips because even if they're accent, they even say things differently. They have all their little slang. So it was a struggle when I got there. But of course, just communicating, I do adapt. Like, I've had some people, they would just text on my phone real quick and show me. And that, that, that helped quite a bit. After a month, I got used to it. Um, and then, of course, doing classes there, there is no ASL interpreting. They have interpreting, but it's Australian Sign Language, not American Sign. So they, they provided me with a note taker. And the way they did their, their note taker was a lot different than what I've had here. Instead of, it was not one of your peers. They actually hire someone from the outside the university. They would just come into class and their prime focus was taking notes for you. And I would get those, get those notes right after class. So it's an it's a interesting experience seeing like, seeing disability centers in the U.S. versus outside the country. Um, let's see. Yeah, so I graduated this last year. I work for Imagine. We serve the population with intellectual and developmental disabilities in Boulder and Greenville County. So I work doing data stuff in their case management department. So it's a good experience. And then the last thing is, I'm currently working on my master's in information technology, so I'm still on my academic journey. So, yeah, that's it.